day good day everybody and today we're going to write, wrap up our series of consumer arithmetics with compound entries prior to this video on friday we would have looked at simple entries and before that we would have looked at 11 other content areas under consumer arithmetics we covered topics such as profit loss percentage profit percentage loss discount higher purchase and the list goes down so uh, the list goes down i will attach the various topics that we did onto this video and you can just go through in your spare time to look at the various videos what are we going to do today today's objective is very simple today we are going to simply briefly look at the concept of compound entries and we're going to also solve a problem involving this concept so what is compound interest and here we have two things that we must bear in mind when dealing with compound entries um, so compound interest is of course a very similar process to that of simple interest. However, the difference lies in that when you're dealing with compound interest, the yearly accumulated interest is added to the principal before you calculate the interest of that given year. I'll explain it, don't worry, I'll explain it. So in essence, when we did simple interest, remember we had a principal, we had a rate and we have the time. And let's suppose we start with a principal of $10,000 and we want to invest that amount of money for three years. For the $10,000, each given year, that principal would not change. And once that is the case, then what we are dealing with is a simple interest. However, with a compound interest, if you start with $10,000 in your first year, guess what? In the second year, your principal will no longer be $10,000. It will be the $10,000 plus the interest for that year. And that will give you a new principal for the second year. So for example, and again, just to draw it to perspective, in the first, in simple interest, your principal will be, if it's for three years, let's say your principal is A. So for three different years, you will have A, A, A. However, so that tells you that your principal is constant. It does not change. However, if you're dealing with compound interest, if the first year your principal was A, then the second year your principal will now be B. And this B now refers to whatever you had the first year plus the interest you made. And then the third year, your principal, your principal will be C. And this simply means the interest from the first and the second year will now make a new principal for the third year. And that is basically what we need to understand with compound interest. So compound interest, the only difference there really is, well, of course, besides the formula being different, is that you do not have the same principal throughout the period of the interest. The principal will change for each given year. So with that in mind, I'll read the definition again. So it's a very simple, it's a very similar process to that of simple interest. However, the difference is that each year, the accumulated interest is added to the principal. Therefore, before the interest for that year is calculated again. So before the interest is calculated again, you will have a new principal. So in essence, each year, the principal will be a new figure. Unlike simple interest, where the principal remains fixed or constant for the duration given of the interest. So that's basically the major thing we have to have at the top of our head when we're dealing with compound interest and simple interest. And of course, we have the difference in formula. The simple interest formula, if you remember from the last video, is PRT. So simple interest is PRT, principal multiplied by rate multiplied by time, all divided by 100. The compound interest formula is a little more intricate, but once we learn the formula, we should have no problems doing any compound interest question. So here we have the amount occurring now. And if you remember the previous video, the amount occurring is the amount of money that we have at the ending of the interest period. So one thing that we need to understand that we'll get out of this formula is that whenever we apply the compound interest formula, the result that we get will be the amount accruing, meaning it will be the amount of money we will get after the period of interest when we perform the compound interest. Unlike the simple interest, if you remember, 
the formula that we use, PRT multiplied divided by 100, when we use that formula, all we are calculating is the sum of interest that we'll be getting. And then we have to add that sum of interest with our initial principle. Principal. But here, that is, no longer, that is not the case. Here, when we apply the compound interest formula, the result that we get when we calculate all these years, given that we're given all this information here, that result will be the total sum of money we earn after the compound interest period. And I'll explain that maybe even further when we do an example. Let's just again break down what each um, constant here is representing. So here we have the A, as I just explained there, is the amount accumulated after N number of years. And the amount accumulated, again, is both your principal and your interest combined. Another word we could use for this is amount accruing everything that you made, how much you invested, how much you get, everything combined together as one. Good. The P, of course, will be the initial principal, and that is what you're putting in your formula. But remember, this formula works out in such a way that it is accumulated per year. I could explain this in a different way, but it will take more work. Or rather, not explain, show you, but we're going to do that maybe later. Maybe. And the R here, of course, is the rate, the rate per annum. So that's the rate of interest in which we'll be getting each year. And the N is the number of years the money was invested for. So that's what the N is for. So usually when you get a question, you have to look out for these keywords because they give you. Of course, remember, algebra is always in the play. So not all the time you may be asked to find the amount accruing or the amount accumulated after N years. Sometimes you may have to find the principal, the initial principal. Sometimes you may have to find the rate or sometimes you may have to find the number of years the money was invested for. And that again comes with understanding the whole concept of finding the subject of the formula. You just have to rearrange the formula a little. However, I must tell you that most times when it comes to compound interest, the case is that you have to find out the amount accumulated after n number of years. That's usually the case. Not with simple interest, however. Okay, so here we have an example. So here we're going to calculate the compound interest after investing $8,000 for three years at a rate of 8%. So of course here we're going to firstly, as I normally like to do, identify what is given. So we are given our principal, and in our case, we know here that our principal, as stated in the question, our investing amount is $8,000. So that's where we start with our $8,000 as P. We also know the duration, which is N, and we know that we want to invest that amount of money for three years, as given in the question. Remember, we're not making up anything, we're working with the values given. And we also know what is our R. Our R, as stated in the question, straight out our rate is actually 8%. So this is what is given and this is what we need in order to calculate our compound interest. We know that the formula for compound interest goes as A. Again, you could just go back in the previous slide if you forgot the formula. Um, A is equal to P multiplied by 1 plus R over 100. And all that's divided, sorry, all that is raised to the power of n. Good? So that's our simple interest formula. And we just have to substitute our values to calculate the amount at the end of this three-year period. So we know that p is 8,000. So we just substitute our value. So we have p, 8,000, multiplied by 1 plus, we know r is 8, divided by 100. And then we have all that raised to the power of 3 because the n is the 3, the number of years. Good. And from here, we just simplify. So this is the same as 8,000. 8,000. Let me take out that 0 here. This here looks almost like a 6. So this is 8,000 multiplied by 1.08 all cube. And we have to be very careful here. I've seen students multiplied, multiply um, 1.08 times 3. If you do that, you would not get the answer. You would not get the correct answer. 1.08 times 3 is not the same as 1.08 multiplied by itself 3 times. You have to be very, very careful. Very, very careful. Sometimes based on the number that is there, it might work, but not all the time. And let me, let me just use a simple example because we need to understand how this system works. So for example, if I have Two square. Here, what is happening here? And this is where sometimes we go wrong. 
if we have something like this, look at this. If we multiply this by this, if we multiply the 2 by the 2 at the top there, we will get 2 times 2. And in this case, we get 4, which is correct. But this here is not really saying 2 times 2. This Well, yes, it's saying 2 times 2, but not 2 times 2 as these 2 here multiplied by these 2 here. It is saying 2 times 2 as in these 2 here multiplied by itself. And thus again we get 2 times 2. And I'm just showing you this because you see sometimes they do the wrong thing but we get the right answer. But here what happens if we have a different number now? Supposing we have 3 instead. And allow me to stray a little but that's what you need to understand. Supposing I have 3 cube now. Here what's happening here now? If I change now. So if I multiply 3 times 2 times 3. So that is 2 times 3. Here now. Here I will get 6. Good. Because that is when I'm doing it wrong. And you see, sometimes the wrong thing gives us the wrong, the wrong, the right answer based on the numbers that are playing out. But looking at a case like this, no, if I do 2 times 2 times 2, which is supposed to be the right thing to do, 2 times 2 times 2, as I said, this will not be the same thing as 2 times 3. 2 times 2 is 4, 4 times 2 is 8. Good. So sometimes based on how the number play out, you might get the right answer and you think, okay, well, next time I have to remember I'm multiplying the little, pop, the little number at the top here by the base here. But no, you'll be wrong. You're, it's, it is wise to always remember, once you see something raised to a power, it's whatever is raised times the amount of power that is there. And when I say that, the amount of the base raised by itself, the amount of that. So 2 cube will be telling you 2 times 2 times 2. If you see 2 to the power 4, let's say, that will be 2 multiplied by itself 4 times. If you see 2 to the power 5, that will be 2 multiplied by itself 5 times and not 2 times 5. So you have to be very, very careful there. Sorry, I had to stray a little there, but I think it made sense because sometimes that's what a lot of students want. You mess up your own self with the right answer. Not because you don't know what you're doing, but because of that misconception you have there. Good. So then you have 8,000 multiplied by, when you multiply this thing in the bracket here, you're supposed to get 1.2, let me write down all the numbers, 1.259712 approximately, I think that's all the numbers I have written here, and then you just simplify by multiplying that 8,000 by that, and your final answer would be 10,000. 10,077 and 70 cents. And this 70 cents here is multi uh, wrong enough to the nearest set. Good? Or wrong enough to two decimal places. So this here would be our answer. This here would be the amount of money. So, of course, if you have to state your answer, calculate the compound interest after investing that amount of money for whatever number of years. So your answer here would be. After, after three years, you will accumulate a compound interest of $10,077.70. And that pretty much would be your amount accurate. Another way in which you could go about doing this, and again, I would take this as a long way, but you could calculate the simple interest of each year. But again, you have to remember that whatever interest you get for the first year, the second year's principal will be the first year's interest plus your initial principal. So let us say after the first year, and I'm just making up a generic value. So the, the principal here for the first year is $8,000. $8,000. That is a given. Oh my. Let me write this eight over. Is $8,000. Sorry. $8,000. This is for the first year. That's a given. No questions about that. If we use the simple interest formula, we will get the interest. So let us say the interest, and again, I'm just making up a generic value here. Let us say the interest will go to be $200. Let us assume. And again, this is generic. You could work it out. I'm just making up a value to draw a picture here for you. So the in and how do you work it out? Very simple. Just find the simple interest of one year. That is PRT. So P would be 8,000. T would be one year. R will be 8, and you divide that by 100. Multiply the top, divide by 100, and you will get your interest. But as I said, I'm just making up a value here. So this is your interest after one year, and this is your principal. So for the second year, 
when you are calculating the simple interest, guess what? Your new principal will no longer be 8,000, but it will now be 8,200. And that is, how the sim that is how the compound interest works. So you could use a simple interest formula, but with your compound interest concept to find out what is the amount of compound interest made after a certain number of years. Of course, it's easier said than done, and it only comes with understanding the concept. Let me put it that way. It's very easy. I hope I did not confuse you. But when you understand the concept, it will be much easier to understand. Or I would even say once you know the formula, just do whichever one it comes to, whichever one they ask you to do. But it's good to play around with the question. So with that in mind, that will bring us to the end of today's video and also to the end of today's series with consumer arithmetic. Starting tomorrow, God's willing, we are going to go into one new series of number theory and computation. So we're going to be looking at various components and elements, concepts, sorry, and elements under number theory. And then that will also take us to about 12 to 13 videos. I think I have planned for that one. So let's move on to learning our mathematics. And again, as always, feel free to like, share, and subscribe. And leave a comment section. Leave a comment in the section below if you have any question or anything that is not clear. Until then, see you all again. Take care.